Welcome to Natech Engineering. This is the second lesson on stress, strain, and Young's modulus. And on this lesson, we are diving deeper to the ability of a material to change in length when acted upon by a force. On the board, I have an object. We call it object B. And it's acted upon by tensile force. And we know that when a tensile force is acting upon an object, the object will increase in length. But as these forces are removed, the object will go back to its original form. That brings us to our first way, our first term, which is elasticity. Elasticity is being defined as the property of a material to return to its original form when the force causing the strain is removed. So the ability of this material to go back to its original form after these two forces are removed, it's elasticity. So if this material is able to return back to its original form, we will say that this material is elastic. It's an elastic material. So let's take the example of a spring. We know that when a force is, when we apply a tensile force to a spring, and then we stop applying that force, we remove the force, the spring will go back to its original form. But if we keep on applying that, that force to the spring, it will come to a point where it now cannot go back to its original form. But that doesn't mean that a spring is not, is not an elastic. It simply means that when we applied the force that we were applying to the spring, we, we exceeded what we call elastic limit. So elastic limit is the point where the object cannot go back to its original form. We know that if we apply a reasonable, for, a reasonable force to the spring and then remove it, the spring will go back to its original form. But with, if we apply a much greater force, the spring, after the force is being removed, will no longer be able to go back to its original form. And then by that time, we will say that the spring has passed its elastic limit. Elastic limit is the point where now the object cannot go back to its original form. So if, let's take, we were applying a force of 5 newtons, 5 newtons, and then after we applied a force of maybe 50 newtons on both sides, and then now after removing the 50 newtons, the object is unable to go back to its original form. We will say now that the force was greater in such a way that it exceeded the elastic limit of this object. And then we look at our third term, which is the Hooke's law. Hooke's law states that for an elastic object, the strain is directly proportional to the stress causing it. So if we were to represent it using a graph, this is how we are going to put it. This is our strain and this is our stress. They say, Hooke's law states that for an elastic limit, the strain is directly proportional to the stress causing it. If we were to draw a, a, a graph, we are going to draw a straight line. So the graph that we are having here, from O to A, it is respecting Hooke's law. Why? Because we know that it's a straight line and that tells us that the strain is directly proportional to the stress. As Hooke's law is telling us that for an elastic limit, for an elastic object, sorry, the strain will be directly proportional to the stress that is causing it. And then from A, from O to A, that's where we have our graph or our object respecting uh, the Hooke's law. But what does this mean? This simply means that if we were to calculate the Young modulus at this point, since we know that the Young modulus, which is E, and then we know that it's the stress divided by the strain. If we were to calculate the Young modulus at this point, and then we calculate the Young modulus at this point, they should be the same. The Young modulus at this point 
should also be the same. As long as we are within the part that is respecting Hooke's law, the Young modulus should be the same at any given point. That's what is meant by the directly proportional. The stress, the strain being directly proportional to the stress that is causing it. And then, point A, we say it equals to the limit of proportionality. And what is the limit of proportionality? The limit of proportionality is the point where now the strain is no longer proportional or it's no longer directly proportional to the stress that is causing it. And that is point A. So from point A going to that direction, the strain, the, the object will, the strain will no longer be proportional to the stress that is causing it. And then we call this point A the limit of proportionality. And then point B, it's elastic limit. This will be our point B. It's very important that you do know this graph because they will ask you about it. Point B, this, the limit of proportionality is point A. The point B, it's the elastic, the elastic limit. We know that elastic limit from here, from O to B. We know that if this object is stretched, it will be able to return back to its original form. But we know that from A to B, the stress and strain is no longer directly proportional, but the object will be able to go back to its original form. So this B is our elastic point. And then C, we call C the yield point. C it's equals to the yield point. Yes, it is, it is the yield point. Yield point is the point where the stretching in the material will take place without any further force being applied to the material. And then we have D. D is the point, let's say D, it's where we will have our maximum stress. D is our maximum stress. And then at E, at E now it's where our, our object will form a neck. Something like this as the forces are applied. We know this object is uh, subjected to tensile force. And then we call E the breaking point. E is the breaking point. It's like E is the breaking point. It's the breaking point. A, we know it's the limit of proportionality. B, it's the elastic limit. C, is the yield point. D, it's the maximum stress. And then, sorry, D is the maximum stress. And then E, at the breaking point. That where that is where our object will will break due to the. Uh, maximum stress that is being applied to the object so make sure you do know this graph because they will ask you about it and then that's basically the end of our lesson today uh i will see you on the next lesson